come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. And you can help us out with that. Yes, you can go over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us rise up through those algorithms and become the fastest growing movie review podcast in the galaxy. It helps us keep chugging. I would say. <laughs> That's right. It's train month continuing <laughs> yes. over the third third month. Uh, these are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. Holly is out on assignment mm-hmm. tonight. Train related assignment, right? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. She's on a train somewhere. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by. Colin. Uh, Colin, where did you take us tonight and how did we get there? We got there by train. Ooh. Nope. We went straight on the Horror Express Ooh. from the year 1972. 72, directed by, uh, I think it's Eugenio Martin. Let me double check I that. Saw, I saw Gene Martin <laughs> or Gene Eugene Martin. Martin. Eugenio yeah. Martin or Martin. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But Ooh, more important is okay. who's in it. Who is in it, Colin? It's the star studded collaboration of. Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. Actually, that's reversed. It's more of Christopher Lee's movie. Yeah. Yes, I would say you are correct. And Christopher Lee's mustache. Yes. Oh, it's definitely Third Christopher build. Lee's mustache's yeah. movie. I'm yeah. jealous yeah. of his ability to just grow a mustache. <laughs> Colin, how many times have Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee teamed up in cinema history? Do it's, you have a number? No, it's a lot. It's a lot. Lots, but I guess this is maybe because it's not a Hammer movie. True. Yeah. Not a Hammer this movie. This is a is Spanish movie. Spanish British co production. Yeah. And but it got both of them, you know, because I think like Hammer was kind of in the early seventies on the wane. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, it was kind of stuck doing the same kind of thing over and over again. Uh huh. And so the Spaniards said we should hire these guys because right? they're, they're box office gold. I mean, it is kind of, you know, it's nice to see the two of them together in this kind of, you know, um, I don't know. I mean, like, there's a cinematic legacy that yeah. these yes. guys have, uh, you know, teaming up because I think they were friends in in real life. Oh yeah, best friends. And because they did, you know, all these horror films together. Mm-hmm. I mean, primarily horror primarily, films. Yes. I mean, they did stuff outside of the genre, but we all know them from like all these team ups where they just seem to end up in the same movies together. Mm-hmm. I um, lean over to Colin in the middle of this. I'm like, these two must have had the greatest time filming this movie considering they are uh good friends and were for their well i like seeing them on the same side too and not against each other it's nice when they they, team up they are kind of rivals in this but they are together which is nice yeah well it seems like um well okay i guess to your first point i guess uh they were very good friends yes but on this movie and i think we've talked about this before when we've talked about about peter cushing there was a period in his life Uh, that was marked by the death of his wife. Uh, Mm -hmm. And apparently this is one of those, like, you know, forever love stories where, like, you know... I will will never love another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, so much so that he was so depressed um, that I guess, like, in private, you know, he was, like, he was, you know... Hurting? He just wanted to be with her again. Uh, That's, wow. And uh, (laughs) had signed up to do this movie... And had shown up, I think, uh, you know, in Spain because they shot it in Barcelona. And uh, I think he basically told the director, the producer, you know, it's like, I don't think I can do this. I really just don't have an interest in anything. Damn. And uh, Christopher Lee heard this and he's like, you know what? Let me let me go talk to him. And so he went and talked to Peter Cushing for a while and got them reminiscing about the past and got him laughing about stuff. And then he agreed, you know, and then Cushing said, OK, I'll, I'll do it. Well, so good. it's like Peter or Christopher Lee kept Peter Cushing alive. I love that. <laughs> I love I mean, the little bromance story behind is, these two. Then, uh, that's a friendship. Yeah. yeah so that was, that's good. And can you imagine what it was like for both of them to watch their careers grow over time too? like getting to see Peter Cushing being Star Wars and then getting to see Christopher Lee being mm-hmm. in Lord of the Rings, you know, like and Star Wars. And Star Wars. And Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. And right. Star Wars. Yeah. And I think like that was what was like kind of, you know, like when when Lucas did those, you know, the prequels and he put Christopher Lee yeah. in it. There was this kind of like, you know, fanboy excitement, at least for me, knowing yeah. that like, oh, you got them both. 
Right. You know, <laughs> I get that now. I didn't before because I didn't know the history of well, the Well, and but. like, it, I don't feel like it This it means as much nowadays, but back then, like, it was like, oh, you made it. You, you got into something <laughs> big and mainstream that will live longer than you, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, that must just be well, a great feeling. Christopher Lee obviously must have known it by the time yeah. he did his. Oh, yeah. I right. don't know if, if Cushing knew it right. when he did Star Wars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but... I mean, that gave yeah. him a, because what he lived until, I believe it was like 94 or something like that, you Damn. know, uh, so obviously he got to live with, you know, seeing what Star Wars became. Mm-hmm. True. Um, All right. Damn. He didn't get, I think God, he didn't see any more of it because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause I often laughs> some wondered, of the choices they made, especially relating to him were questionable. Right. They brought yeah. him back. He yeah. That to, was yeah, difficult. Yeah. In, yeah. A, in, a, in a future yeah. movie. Um, but yeah, I've always wondered, you know, it's like, you know, when you look at Star Wars was, um, you know, Darth Vader, like, you know, uh, uh, inspired by Christopher Lee's Dracula, mm-hmm. you know, Lucas grew up with the Dracula mm-hmm. movies and then the bad guy in his movie he has a big cape, big and, cape. Mm-hmm. you know, but, uh, it might be a stretch. I don't know. Could be. There. I mean, there's, you, you find a way, if your sensibility is that you'll find a way to put little things from those into your movies. Who uh, knows? Yeah, George Lucas wears his influences on his sleeve. He That's doesn't exactly true. hide them. So, yeah. you know. And when he brings them in, he count Dooku. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, yeah. right. He's a count. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come on. I mean. <laughs> and so, I appreciate yes. that now, like, you can play Star Wars video games as uh, Christopher Lee. He had yeah. the coolest yeah. lightsaber. <laughs> yeah, you guys remember what his one... handle looked like? It had the bent handle? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was really cool. Thing. He was, like, one-handed. Yeah. Like, he was very good. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been really funny if they just would have named his character like Dr. Acula instead. Yeah, I know, know? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, Count yeah. Alucard. Darth, yeah. Darth Alucard. There yeah, you go. Yeah. yeah. Darth Alucard. There why we not? go. I mean, yeah. that sounds just as good as Darth Sidious. Yeah, it, yeah, does. it does. I mean, like, why not? If anything, it's a little more subtle than Darth Sidious. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so Horror Express um, comes to us. I don't know if uh, I was looking for his name in the credits. And I didn't see it, but uh, apparently, um, and again, you know, we were talking about this is like horror or uh, train month because we did, if you're just joining us for mm. the first time, very recently over the past couple of months, we did um, Terror Train. We did. And we did Night Train to Terror. Yep. Mm-hmm. And Night Train to Terror was produced by uh, Philip Jordan. Right. Who also produced this movie? Ah, he's got a thing for train movies. <laughs> yeah, huh? for trains and a train horror movies specifically. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, I mean, he did a lot of stuff, and I guess, like, you know, when you look him up now, he did a lot of uh, front work for blacklisted Hollywood um, writers. Okay, like he would I remember take this the credit for it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but he did a movie um, called Pancho Villa, right? Pancho about, yeah. about Pancho Villa. Uh, that starred Tali Savalas, uh. and it used a train in its, uh, you know, <laughs> a, as part of a prop. So sure. I believe they had a train car. Okay. A I train see where this car. Is going. And yeah. they spun a whole movie out of uh, it with is that this prop. One train car? It is this one whole train movie? car. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's rough. It's that's... One train car redressed. And so they had to shoot every scene that happened in each car. That's fantastic. Oh my God. What That's, a bunch of work. What an Holy arduous shit. process. Yeah. But fantastic after seeing the movie. Mm-hmm. Fantastic to know. They pulled it off pretty well. They pulled honestly. it off very yeah. well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but that's why you never actually see anybody passing between the, uh, the cars. Right. No, that makes sense. You won't notice that while you're watching. No, it. not right. at all. I, yeah, because you got you just flip the camera on the hallway, it's right. left and right. You get so much out of that. Yeah. Right. Well, I was noticing. I mean, like they would completely strip it and you oh, know, yeah. re- rebuild right. the interiors, yeah, oh, yeah. but I guess it was basically all the same dimensions. You know. Wow. And these interiors are elaborate, so that's right? a lot of set dressing to do. Wow. Yeah, there's curtains. I'm sure with heavy fabric, like, curtains everywhere. Curtains everywhere on every surface. There's curtains. There's more fabric in these. Uh, cars and there is wood. Yeah, it was uh, it was an elegant thing Elegance, to travel yes. by train. Have you ever seen uh, Once Upon a Time in the West? Uh, that also has like mm-hmm. a very elegant, uh, you know, like train travel, mm-hmm. like back in the uh, in the good old, good yeah. old days. Well, I've, this is... <laughs> I've ridden on like a nice commuter train. It did not look anything no, like this. No, no, like no, 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 but they didn't even have private like cars or cabins or anything. It was just like nice seats. Like yeah. a, it was like a plane, basically. Yeah, it was yeah, very yeah. similar it's to like a, plane. a plane or a bus yeah. now, basically public transportation you right. get down there. And, but back then, they would serve you uh, salmon, right, on a nice bed of uh, you know lettuce yeah. and vegetables, and <laughs> and people are dressed up like it's a nice fancy dinner, it's white tablecloths. I was like, mm. how do I get that this, was the this norm train experience back then? That was just people went out. You wouldn't dare leave your house unless you were in a suit. 
Going That's to a true. restaurant that had nice tablecloth. I know, I kind of missed that. I would. It would. It be would cool. be fun to go yeah. back to that. Yeah, it would be nice. I'd be all for it. It's like no, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, jacket required. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we have one you can borrow. Those kinds <laughs> yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't miss that. I'm, 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 ever since since I entered this work from home life, I am pro soft clothes all the time. I'm not wearing any hard <laughs> mm, clothes anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Horror Express, I guess, for some of you listening, uh, may be on your radar because I think it ran into um, copyright issues or something. Oh, what for? So that it was basically public domain. Oh. So, oh. I mean, through at least the, the 80s, you know, 90s, you know, uh, television, it seemed like it was on a lot on like, uh, you know, horror hosted stuff. They'd always get a copy of it. It was on VHS a lot mm-hmm. on those you know we got 15 movies oh yeah, oh, yeah. and one of them is horror oh. express and night of the living dead and right, i was gonna say those are the, those the are two that are on there. There. oh yeah horror express and uh house on haunted hill you know yeah, it was right. always on those sets right um colin did you pick this as counter programming the death on the nile no no i didn't because <laughs> it no, feels no. like it, it feels like it yeah because it feels like it this feels like a death on the nile uh, yeah. on the orient express type of thing yeah well, ironically in spain i believe it is known as panic on the Trans- trans-siberian express uh, that's a right, cool title right. though, too. Yeah, that's like good that. so i remember yeah. i imagine that being more 70s with that title going wham yeah uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, horror express it's okay. It's not bad. Yeah, it's, it's not just a bad a, name at all. It sounds like a worse movie than it is. I think that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't go with the movie necessarily or what happens in it. They could have had a better name. Yeah. Yeah, because... Uh, Something a little classier. Yeah, probably, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's go okay. with the curtains yeah. in this train Yeah, you're car. right. I mean, it does. I guess maybe that's it. It doesn't sound, uh, it doesn't sound very upscale. Uh, you know, <laughs> right. Express. But it also, um, it Christopher like Lee British was movie. in um, Horror Hotel. Which okay. was also known as City of the Dead, which both of those are kind of generic, yeah. but that's yeah. a much better movie mm-hmm. than either title mm-hmm. would, would uh, right? It'll yeah, that, yeah. I just recently watched that movie this past Halloween and was surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Yeah, <laughs> Horror Hotel. Mm-hmm. What happens in this hotel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just, I don't know. <laughs> Horror Hotel and Horror Express. Um, okay, so... Um, and I guess, uh, you know, and Tully Savalas, who we mentioned before, is in this movie also. He is. I forgot he was going to be in it until he showed up yeah. way later in the movie. He just kind of shows up in the third act and takes it over. He shows up like a <laughs> final boss you have to literally fight yeah. in a yeah. train car to move on to the final act of the yeah, story. Yeah, it's very weird because he's promised like early on, and I don't know like how big of a star he was at this point in time, but because I, this is pre-Kojak. Mm-hmm. Right? So where's Dirty Dozen in this? This is pre pre- Dirty oh. Dozen is before this. I was going to say, this is post Dirty Dozen. And he was doing movies uh, in uh, Europe, um, a lot of Spanish and Italian movies. Mm-hmm. And then I think uh, one of the quotes I found from him was uh, the difference between um, like European and American movies is the Americans pay you. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, then he got Kojak and it became the who right. loves you, baby guy <laughs> right. you know, and the lollipop and all that stuff. And yeah. Apparently the lollipop he was trying to quit smoking. Yeah, oh, yeah. you gotta have that yeah, oral fixation. The whole character thing, like mm-hmm. that, yeah, that it just went over to the new one with thing <laughs> yep. names. Yep. Yep. Um, okay, so this movie, uh, I guess, uh, for those of you who don't know what it is, and it's like it, it kind of sells itself as a horror movie. It would sell itself as a horror movie on a train. Yeah, basically. It, but is, is that, that a, accurate? No, not not at all. It it's like a thriller mystery. Science fiction, yeah. Science fiction, creature feature of, for a little bit by way of yeah. 1906. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So where it takes place early science fiction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, We're, mostly fiction, very little science. <laughs> what is that? I love that stuff, though. It's like, <laughs> I know, I it's, do too. <laughs> it's it's like I don't. You don't even. I now you'd call it pseudoscience or right. something, but right. it's like it's oh, all they knew at the time. Yeah, right. I mean, I guess I remember seeing. um even there's a, a plot device in this which involves the uh, latent images <laughs> that are extracted from a dead person. Oh yeah, we'll get um, to that eyeball. And I, I mean, in 1970, what was it, two or three? When yeah. uh, Dario Argento made, um, was it Four Flies on Gray Velvet? Mm-hmm. That becomes like a thing in there. Like, yeah, you can actually see the last thing a person saw, <laughs> you know, by by looking at the the back of their eye or something. Right? Like that. Yeah, like, wasn't that the whole the thing? Hell? Like the last image you see gets <laughs> yeah. burned in your yeah, eye. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. Can yeah. See it. Like if you shine light through some a dead 
And they've done this in movies too, yeah. where they shine lights yeah. on a corpse's head and you can see the last image. It's usually upside down and shit. Yep. <laughs> that, I love that idea. Yeah. As ridiculous as it obviously is. Right. It's fun. But that's an idea that, like, you know, like people. I don't know if they you could talk me it, into it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. It just seemed like it was an accepted. The thing. fear burns yeah. it into your yeah. retina. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, like, sure, why not? Life is random and nothing matters. That's entirely possible, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's very weird. So a lot of pseudoscience in this movie, but um, but fun when it's delivered in such a dry manner from Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. Yeah. This is such a. It's a very <laughs> dry British movie. <laughs> it is, and I love that about this. Yeah. I told five minutes and I'm like, I can't wait for them to figure this all out in their very dry British way. Yeah. I was so looking forward to it. It's so buttoned up. It it's, is so buttoned but, up. Yeah. It's yeah. like, monsters were British. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Really good that's joke. great. Yeah. That, is, that should be the log line for this movie. Right. <sighs> Could be you. Us. We're British. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Perish the thought. Yes. Um, <laughs> Okay, well the, so the movie opens in um, Sichuan, China. It does. Because this was when the Brits still ruled China, right? Didn't they rule for like a long time? I think they ruled China. They had, right? They had, uh, well, they had Taiwan. Okay. This is, you know I'm what? Sorry. We're not here for, <laughs> yeah. they're not here for his <laughs> <laughs> I thought China was under empire well, I mean, rule for a long time. I'm going to check. England has invaded nearly every corner of the earth at this point and had territories and colonies pretty much everywhere mm. they used to have that saying the sun never sets on the british flag that's because right, they have yeah. so many colonies so True. they've had some sort of input and influence at some point at I'm some sure. point and they're definitely so uh, christopher lee is um and i'm not even sure of like his station in in society but he's often referred to as your excellency mm -hmm. um and he is leading an expedition into like the Himalayas or something. Um, no, sorry. Or wherever the, yeah, they, they're going into the mountains yep. to find uh, a, fo so where they, they found, they've discovered a fossil, mm -hmm. right? Which yeah. is a, uh, like ape man, the missing link. Yes. Right? Basically yes. the missing link is yeah. what they think they've discovered. So he is ape-ish. Which like, like, how many horror movies do we have to watch with people fucking with something frozen in it? You right. know, don't it do bites it. him in the ass. Yeah, you don't, don't, do don't do it. Don't do it. Would, uh, do you guys remember? Was it like maybe a decade or more ago when they had found that woolly mammoth completely preserved right. nice in Canada, and they were going to try and like, like use we stem cells it. to bring? Yeah, bring it back. Yeah, like, no, yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, no, don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, don't. No, I the mean, movies have taught us anything. Yeah, I even mean, Jurassic Park said don't do this. <laughs> I mean, do it just because I want to see the woolly mammoth get loose and yeah. you know go down the street. You know, if that's how the world ends, that'd be a pretty exciting way for it to take off. So that'd be interesting. It wouldn't be dull. Yeah. Um. Uh. Uh. The British Empire controlled Hong Kong until 1987. Hong Kong. God damn it! Yeah, and right. I know yep, yep, that yep, yep, yep. because of the movie Rush Hour. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say we didn't teach you anything, yeah. right? That's right. Oh my God! I apologize. Everybody's out there like, "What? You got your geography? Just like, okay. Their steering okay. wheel. Yeah, yeah. We're not the best in history. <laughs> yeah. We piece it together through movies, so right. that's what we got. Yeah. We got to pack a lot of other stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay. So uh, anyway, he finds this fossil and then. Boxes it up in a crate. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is going to transport this back to presumably England via the Trans-Siberian Express. Yeah. And this is where right. the movie kind of like gets all of our characters together and uh, to get them on this train. Although it does have um, like it kind of gives like this scale of production there by having this scene that takes place at the train station. Right. Right there on the mm -hmm. steps. Which is very bustling, full of, you know, uh, people coming here and there and, you know, smoke and all. It's, yes. it's got a good. So you're like, oh, even though the rest of the movie is going to be confined on this, you know, as we know right. now. There are people well, in this. Like there. It's not just like four characters and we don't see anybody else. Like there's people hanging around and stuff. You know, yeah. it doesn't feel as cheap as I guess it could. Right. Yeah, I know. That's why like it it's not bad. And there's they use a lot of model work a lot. Yes. Which I got to tell you the first time I saw it, well, okay, maybe it <laughs> did, you know, like eventually you're looking at it going like is that a model train? Okay, so it works for me because that is what I was doing. I'm like, is okay, yeah. that's a model. Is that one a model? Like yeah. I couldn't tell, although it does give you plenty of opportunity to figure it out yeah. Yeah. because yeah. we cut back to this <laughs> literally every other 10 seconds. In between every like scene, basically. In between every scene, sometimes within a scene based on i think they do it to amp up they're using it to ramp up the action that's happening in the scene mm -hmm. it's an odd thing but i don't know, it we see works. it in a lot of weather conditions you know there's yeah. uh snow you know snow blasted daytime nighttime yeah. you know i mean we see it a lot and 
I, I'm wondering if like what sells it is like you actually shoot a model outdoors instead of on a on a you know set, and somehow that reads is more like realistic or something. These are know. like Night of the Lepus style models. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're that good. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, they were good in that movie. Yeah. I, was I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, because then you're like. We're still trying to figure out because they did get some shots of an actual train. We know this because one of the first shots in the movie is you can see the shadow of the camera people yeah. as they get a whip shot yep. of the train yep. and then take the camera off the tripod. Yep. So are there, some, there are some real trains in this, but a lot of model work. Well, we're introduced to all of our characters, um, but there's, um, a, first of all, uh, an incident which happens on the, the platform mm. and this is a chinese uh thief yes who is known to the police tries to uh thinks it's something of value in, inside the uh the box and he tries to uh, you know uh safe crack it yep. mm -hmm. and or pick the lock and he ends up dead with whited out eyes bleeding yes. slightly bleeding yeah mm -hmm. his eyes and his mouth mm -hmm. it's the same for every person that happens to but yeah. yes. mm -hmm. creepy it is creepy mm -hmm. it's a good look white eyes are always creepy mm -hmm. Like, if your eyes have rolled into the back of your head, I'm mm -hmm. I'm freaked out. I okay. think it's worse than all black eyes. All white looks way creepier, I think. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I would say so. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they're like a human They pop and they that. kind of glow, yeah. you know? Oh. Well, he's dead. <laughs> yeah. Very and dead. It, so everybody's getting on board the train. And the Brits are, are don't care. <laughs> yeah. Carry on with your fancy salmon dinners in your curtain rooms. Don't yeah. worry about this, you know? He exactly. shouldn't have tried to break into it. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. him. Well, this becomes like a thing because, uh, you know, like Cushing and uh, and Lee are kind of like, uh, you know, they're of in the science field. Yes. And uh, one's an anthropologist. The other is a medical doctor. I think so. Based on his, because he is Dr. What, Dr. Dr. Wells, Dr. Wells. And he does perform a couple of uh, autopsies in this movie. So he yeah. has medical training, if nothing else. Yeah. But there's some kind. I wonder if what Doctor Wells is uh, H H G Well, I mean, like who? It knows, has to be right. As some kind of nod to sci-fi, but um, so the weird. So we get to we're introduced to like a bunch of characters. There's um, a Russian priest who looks like Rasputin. Yes, yes, very much. Who's warning us of evil? Satan mm -hmm. is you know. So this guy's deal feels like it changes a lot in this movie. Like he's. It seems like he's for God off the bat, but then he's just like, I found Satan. Please let me follow you. Like he this goes to that, Satan. Uh, the raw had Rex effect. Uh, yes. When you actually see the deity, you yeah. know. And he hasn't seen God. He hasn't but seen he God. saw Satan. Yeah. And, and it's like, okay. okay, you're real. You're here. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will follow you. But that, I guess maybe that's where you get the horror express of the title is because the, the monk priest, sorry, he mm. thinks that he's seeing the devil. Yes. Um and maintains that belief like basically the entire way through the yes. movie. It's like this is evil. Well, I mean, I guess he calls this him is evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he tries to draw a, cru a crucifix <laughs> in chalk on the side of the crate and it won't. It won't draw. Mm -hmm. it, it won't take the chalk. That's the means the presence of the devil. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is the devil. By the time we get to the end of this movie, we're gonna have to maybe figure this out. But, um, but and then there's okay. So there's the uh, the priest. He's in the employ of a Polish count and yes. countess. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, there's also this uh, woman. I'm not sure of her nationality, but she was later revealed to be a spy. Ooh. Okay. Is this the one with the dog? At the very beginning. That was the countess. Okay, that's mm -hmm. the countess. The other one who snuck into Peter Cushing's room. Right. Like, yeah. you have to help me. I don't have a her. whatever. Yeah. Or the, the redhead. Yeah. The other redhead yep. with the green dress and everything. Okay, yeah. Spy. Spy. Yes. She's a spy. She's a spy. Uh, there's another doctor, mm -hmm. a woman doctor. Yeah, Dr. Jones. Uh, Dr. Jones. <laughs> Who is she? I've seen her before. <laughs> I'm going to look her up. If I think that she may be in like Night Train to Terror, but I'm not entirely here. She reminds me something. of uh, what's uh, uh, Rubenstein um, from Zelda, Zelda Rubenstein. She reminds me of Zelda Rubenstein, but yeah. I've seen her in some other old stuff before, I think. There's a police inspector mm -hmm. who's on this uh, train. Yes, with a great mustache connected to chops. Yep. He's got good facial hair. Yeah. I mean, are those the main the main players? Am Until Telly Savalas shows up, I yeah. believe so. Okay. And so, then random train employees as we go. So basically, it seems like we're setting the stage for a kind of Agatha Christie style thing. Yeah. There's a creature that is on board, supposedly frozen, but mm -hmm. very quickly it unthaws 
and it's going to go and go through all the folks on this train. But yes. something immediately weird happens as this thing gets out of the crate. It's red eyeball. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we see that first, right? We see we yeah, we see a red eyeball because Peter Cushing has, like we said, is sort of a rival to Christopher Lee in this. And he's very curious about what Peter Cushing is or um Christopher Lee is bringing home in this very large crate on this train. So he pays the um the baggage man to like like I wouldn't do uh wouldn't be a problem if somebody drilled a hole in this just to see what it was, you know? Wink wink, gives him a little change and he's like, do that for me tonight. And so he's opening it up to see what's inside. And he gets an eyeful of the red Saint eye from the monster. Yeah, it glows. Mm -hmm. It does. And it's only got one eye. Yeah, I don't know what happened to its other one. I right. mean, he's been frozen in ice forever, so mm -hmm. he probably just you know lost it. But when you look into the eye of this creature, uh, that's how you end up with the white, the whited out eye. Yes, right. Okay, but the weird thing that happens <laughs> is uh, not only is the porter, uh, the baggage man, whistling a tune. Yes. Um, which is going to be heard throughout the rest of this movie. Um, but also the creature, and this is where, because you guys hadn't seen this before. So I, that's right. why I'm like, don't right. look up anything, just like <laughs> yeah. go into it. So I'm kind of curious, like what your expectations were as the movie unfolded, because when I saw it the first time, it kept evolving. You're like, wait, what am I? What, yeah. What is this? Because the monster reaches out of the hole that it's, you know, of the, the, the crate. And finds a nail, bends it, and picks the lock. Yeah. And you're like, this is a two million old year old fossil? What right. the hell is going on? Oh, right. See, now I'm just Oh my god, I just put that together. I did. I just put it together <laughs> that he got the information from, from the, the baggage smith. guy. Yes. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. Makes sense now. All right. Got it. <laughs> yep. Yep. I because wonder what else we put together <laughs> along the way. But yeah, wow, never, now that makes sense. Yeah, because that happened very early. I didn't put that together. Now well, so sense. what were you thinking? Well, okay, so then what were you I thought this, thinking there? Well, I just point? thought it was movie logic. I didn't think, like, I wasn't thinking about why it knew how to do that. I was more like, what is this thing? Was yeah, kind because of I don't think we know, it being this early on, I didn't know kind of what the monster was capable of exactly. or what it was. So him being doing this, I'm like, oh, okay. We're still in the figuring it out process. Right. Now it makes sense looking back on it yeah. based on what we know. Yeah, and all right. the Locked smooth the thief, brains we right? see. Yeah. He, 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 he borrowed his knowledge. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's, I guess, what, what we're, we find out about the monster yes. is that it when it's looking into your eyes and it makes your eyes go white, it's actually sucking your brain dry. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> sucking your brain smooth. <laughs> yeah, which the way they get to that idea is wonderful. <laughs> that they perform an autopsy in this train car yes. and see a completely smooth brain. Wonder. The yeah. brain's not gone. Doesn't suck the brains out. They clarify that because someone says, "Oh, it sucks your brains out." No, 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 no. It does not do that. It just takes the knowledge from your brain out of your brain and, and smooths it out. Wrinkles are gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't get it. it's pseudoscience. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, definitely pseudoscience, but it's fun. But like a prop smooth brain is really funny to look at. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's really fun. Mm -hmm. I like that they're just doing this in the baggage car. Now, granted, it's at the back of the train, but like eventually a lot of autopsies. It seems. Like yeah, yeah. they just turn into a little coroner's office in yep. the back of this train car. Oh yeah, then they're just doing microscopic science experiments in the dinner car. Yeah. Like, doesn't matter to these guys. These are men of science. That's right. Yeah, and nothing will be get done. in their way. No, mm -hmm. because there's a minute there's somebody killing people on the train. Mm -hmm. I love the way that Christopher Lee, like, uh, you know, just kind of deals with, um, you know, these revelations. You oh know? yeah, that's the dryness <laughs> of it when he like when he does get these revelations. Just like, well, it's like a natural. They're very smart people. It's just like a natural progression of thought. Well, this is obviously what would happen, and he says it so matter of factly. It just makes it. Uh, They're so confident. So confident. Yeah. Yes. In everything they say, they deliver with gravitas and confidence in yes. a way that you're just in like, way, I'm convinced. Yeah, <laughs> in a way that only the British can convince. There's yeah. like no pause for really self reflection. It's like, just, no. you know, you know that, you know, no I know time. that this is, you know, real. And I put, this is the evidence that I'm given. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then. That this is the conclusion that you obviously draw from it because uh, until we gather more information, this there's, is where we are. But there's a great scene where Peter Cushing basically uh, has to explain. I, I think probably it's a catching the audience up scene, but it's like, do you mean to tell me <laughs> that you're a monster, which has been fro uh, like, no, it's sorry, a two million year old specimen fossil has come to life. 
is sucking the brains of you know our knowledge. Sucking of the knowledge. Of, like he, it's one of those moments where the character. Do you mean to tell me? And then lists. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> yeah. what is happening in yeah, the movie. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's great. Yeah. Do you mean to tell me? It's yeah. like we do. And and Lee's response is, what was it? It was something oh. like, well, well, not, not well, certainly, but it was some kind of like. Yep, I mean, he's like, yep. he's like, well, yeah. yes, that's obvious, but there's more to it. Yeah, it's like, wow, we are all, they are all in agreement. They are all in. Yeah, uh, yeah. science has told them this is what's happening. Yep. And there's a monster loose on the train. Bam. Yep. Okay, no need to get excited. We have it figured out. <laughs> what's it like to have a group project work this well? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Like, yeah, there's a lot of people involved yeah. in this, and it's working out pretty well. Yeah. Well, I get that the official dumb is like we don't want to disturb anybody. You know, all the passengers, <laughs> right, right? Right. You right. know, but you know, clearly we have to find out like where this mo- this monster is because it does go through um the train and starts killing people and i'm like okay well what's its goal here what is it after because it seems to just like uh it takes out oh maybe it, it took out the the two other police officers right i think it went after them next so that leaves just the the inspector by okay. himself there's, right. so there's no one else with a gun basically that can kill it with a bayonet yeah yeah and then it's kind of skulking around. We do get like a pretty good look at this thing. Yeah. Uh, it's all hairy, you it know. Is. It kind of reminded me of the uh, uh, the zombie we always see on the cover of Zombie a little bit. Just the eye, yeah, trauma. the eye yeah. a little bit, yeah. Just yeah. I, like it doesn't have a nose. <laughs> no. But for so much of it, we just see its hand and its forearm doing stuff, and I love yeah. that. Yeah, I love it. That you just know it's some fucking prop guy wearing that up to his elbow, and that's it. Just yep. reaching around doorways and doing stuff. Uh-huh. And he kind of has like like Grinch fingers almost. Like there's like yeah. furry tufts on the end that would make it hard to grab stuff. It's interesting. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a decent ape hand. Yeah. I've seen worse. <laughs> I know? like it. Sure. Yes. Um. And then, who does he? They're like, well, he goes around killing people. He does. We there is a story to it because at one point, who goes into the passenger or back into the car? Who almost was it? Cushing, the police officer, at some point shoots the monster. Like this is what we get to. Oh right, right. Yeah. there is a confrontation between the actual monster. Um, the policeman gets caught up in the gaze of the monster, and we know what happens. You know, if you mm-hmm. get caught up in his But gaze. it doesn't boil his eyes. It doesn't. He ends we up... We know that they're boiled because of the fish that was right. served. Yeah. It's like, and they're like, eyes are white. They're like bulging and coming out of the yeah. head a little bit, too, in a way that's kind of gross. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, so he gets caught up in it, but he's able to shoot the monster before he gets fully yeah. uh, white-eyed. Does this thing have only have a short range? Like, it can't do it from that distance? He Maybe. needs to be like within, like, do it from four across feet? Well, yeah. We learn later, and I wonder if this, uh, if we go back and look at it, like, he's standing in a lighted area, Okay. and uh, later we find out that the monster's eyes, you can only see the glow, it only works, you can only do right. this in the dark, because right. he's always well, going around turning the lights <laughs> yeah. out in order to this put is, you under the wagon. Why didn't this he is cut the terror power? train! Yeah. This monster was on terror train, yeah. that's why all those lights are fucking off. Yeah, yeah. there well, you go. He does cut the power at one point, but it only turns off like the back half of the train. Yeah. Or something right, like yeah, that. yeah. Because this is one of those escalating horror movies right. where things are going to get more and more out of control as things go right. on. Yes. But yeah, okay, so they shoot and kill the monster after yes. he has also killed the uh, the spy. Dr. Jones. Wait, no, he killed the spy. And he kills Dr. And Jones. And he kills Dr. Jones. And we're like, okay, so what knowledge is he gaining here that he's going to exploit later? Which I'm not entirely sure because it seems okay. Well, I guess we're gonna have to get to the monster's goal here in a minute. Well, but, yeah. So there's this is where they extract the eyeball from the monster. Yes. <laughs> Don't like this. <laughs> and uh, they so they take some eyeball <laughs> fluid out of it. Yeah. Which they, they poke a real too this, many close ups to that, this. Yeah, that's an eyeball. Yeah. No special effect to this. Yeah. And this is where we go into our latent image uh, section of the movie. This so, is the best, best scene in the movie, in my, I mean, in my it, opinion. It I is think. one of the best. It's not even that they're finding the images, like we said, on the eyeball. This is in liquid that has come out of the eye yeah. that they're looking under a microscope at, mm-hmm. and what's we're the, seeing images. What's the first thing that they see? A brontosaurus? <laughs> No, they, no, they see the detective. The, 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 oh, the detective. Yeah, they the see detective? the detective. They're like, this is the last thing the monster saw. And then they keep looking. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. How do you do this? And then you put like, more drops? Yeah, I guess. You take, you a, go di- back a different to the drop. Wall. Yeah. yeah. There's no, oh, it's pseudoscience all the hell. Yeah. Is. But then at one point, you're right. They're just He's like, like, it's a brontosaurus. <laughs> and a pterodactyl. Yeah. I, and then the earth. 
<laughs> and uh, wow, did not see that coming at all. The, no. We, and, these- and you literally see like a little drawing. It's like they clearly printed out a a brontosaurus and then put this wa- like food color water over it on a piece yes. of paper so you could see it through it right and oh my god you see a straight up brontosaurus and this like droplet of eye fluid and it's delightful it's, <laughs> it is it's so, amazing so this thing is as old as dinosaurs i guess so, the, so and then they see the picture of earth and they uh get as extrapolate from, from this as yeah. from space so they think they summarize this thing is an alien yeah and this is an image he saw from space and okay. now he's come down here so it's the thing from another world. Yep. Okay. So <laughs> now once you get that, like, yep. is this movie the thing? Because we start off in the kind of. <laughs> yeah, it kind of <laughs> is. It's a version of it. Fossil. Yeah. It's like they went back to the story and then and they made went this. back to who's who goes there. Yeah. It's like they took who goes there. The yeah. original uh, was John Campbell. John story, Campbell's, yeah. And set it on the Orient Express. Yep. Because they had the set. It's yep. also. I think heroes stole from this movie oh. because Zachary Quinto's character Siler in the first couple seasons right. of heroes opens up people's sucker. heads and looks at their brain and learns everything they learn. He absorbs uh, all their knowledge by looking at their brain. Yeah. He can take it apart and yep. see how the clock works. Figure out how, how things tick. Isn't that how he describes mm-hmm. it, right? I yeah, just learn how things tick. Yeah, maker or yep. something like that. Yeah. yeah, which he learned by taking them apart and looking at them. And then, he, yeah, that transferred to brains after the eclipse on that show, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, but this is, okay, so again, I'm just curious because this kind of, you know, when I was watching it the first time, this is one of the, uh, the second moment where you're like, okay, we're going like bigger than... In a different direction right. than I thought, based on this title and this premise. It becomes yes. <laughs> even more like the thing after this, I would say. Just like yeah. it being able to take the form of yeah. someone and blend in on the train. Because yeah, it, then who is the thing? Right, exactly. Because right? we think, oh, it's dead, it's been shot dead. But yep. no, it was able to transfer its consciousness in that last moment into the inspector. Mm-hmm. And how do we know this? Because his left hand uh, turns into a... Furry hand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, granted, you could probably do that in a better way. Right. But okay. <laughs> he has it, to I keep mean, his hand in does. his pocket. He does. He has to keep in his pocket. Yeah. I mean, it leads to some sort of like tension there mm-hmm. with that. It's, uh, yeah. But then, I mean, he, so he doesn't habit the police officer who then goes around doing under the guise of a cop, which makes more sense. He goes around talking to all the different people. Um, on the train, and I think through this, as we learn what the ultimate motive of the monster is, Colin, it's the same motive as the thing, as the thing, yeah. Yeah. he's like, I want to uh, figure out how to get back. So he's like the, I think the Polish, what was he, the uh, the, the, was count, the count, yeah, the count has brought steel onto the train. That is the hardest steel imaginable, and so they're asking questions about. Uh, how that it, how how it can hold up to heat and everything. He's asking the engineer who we met earlier. That's another character we forgot. The engineer. They have the glasses. Is playing chess. Yeah. Um, he's asking him about breaking free of Earth's gravity in order to get back out into space. Uh-huh. He asks the questions and then he he's like, "Oh, you have the knowledge I want. Give me your brain." Yeah. Then he just takes the brain. This is like fascinating, you know, because yeah. it's like you're like, okay, we got like an alien thing walking around, you know, and it takes possession of people. But because it has absorbed the knowledge of the the the, fe- the, the people that it's you know uh, that it's killing, yeah, it then knows how to behave as a human, yeah, right. So I mean, to you, it would appear just as like a person, kind of like I guess the thing, right? right like yeah. it knows exactly, you know. There's no like, how does this work or anything like that. It knows it, <laughs> yeah, because it absorbed you <laughs> or your consciousness. Yeah, this isn't a uh, comedy of any sorts where he's trying to figure out how to work a body. Yeah, no, uh, this isn't Men in Black. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the um, the priest still maintains oh, yeah. that this is the the devil. Because even when he is presented with the evidence of um, the uh, shot, uh, the latent image of the Earth as seen from space, yes. he says, well, that's Lucifer. Mm-hmm. You know, Lucifer, before he was thrown out of heaven, had a view of the Earth uh, you know, from this. And I think actually, you know, when, when Christopher Lee's like, there's a scientific explanation, he's like, well, what is it? And Christopher Lee's like, well, I don't have it yet. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, aha, because it's, you know, it's the devil. Right. He the makes absence a, of the explanation means the devil. 
But I guess that's where his character makes that kind of switch. You know, as we were talking about earlier, he witnesses the creature killing Dr. Jones. Yeah. And then he's like, I will serve you, master. You know, who are you? You know, it's like, I will I mean, for do I know, your bidding. Right? It becomes if aliens Renfield. came down now, I might do the same thing and be like, you're obviously real. What can I do for you? Yeah, because, well, usually you say that's like maybe a survival thing. Don't sure. kill me. Right. Sure. Uh, let me, uh, I'll serve you. But Think of it as, uh, what's his name from the mummy movie with Brendan Fraser? Um, mm -hmm. uh, what's his name? It's not Billy, is it? Uh, I don't know. I don't the, know. the annoying Brendan character. Fraser yelling it, but I can't remember right. what, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Oh, fuck. I remember his name. Eddie. Eddie? No. Damn it. But whatever. Okay, I mean, whatever. What's that turban. character? Yeah. Yes. He's like, I'll do whatever you want. He, he finds the master who's the strongest at the time and will yeah. serve them. Yes. <laughs> so... There's enough people have been killed, and I think the um, because I'm like, who notifies Benny? Sorry, Benny, <laughs> it is Benny. There you go, you got it. Sorry, it's Benny. Okay, um, so anyway, the train because it's suffering from all these dead people, and somebody <laughs> must say, send word, yes, that the devil is on board, <laughs> right? Yes. We have mm -hmm. to send a telegram ahead that the devil is on board. Uh, and I think they that they want to stop the train at this next station. They wanted to switch the rails because the way the rail they want to switch it to goes off a cliff. Well, first before that, we haven't even gotten to Telly Savalas yet. Okay. Yeah, Telly Savalas yeah. has got to get on the train. Yeah. So I think that's they sent a telegram ahead to his station. Yeah. Okay. But and that's why when he when the 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 telegram guy was um, reading it off, I don't remember it, but the way that, that Savalas reacted was like. You know, even the devil must be afraid of one good Cossack or something <laughs> yeah. like that. So he's like this power mad Russian, uh, you know, police guy who yeah. apparently or army. I don't know what the it, but he outranks everyone on the train. Apparently. And he dresses like it, too. Yeah. Yeah. This and, big, like, fur, red, uh, red, like long coat yes. with no shirt underneath it. Oh, no. Yeah, well, because he's in bed with you know some girl, and yeah. gets this like you got to go to work. Like, oh, yeah, little father, you're gonna have to tell me. Savalas gun, he goes off. Yeah, he has this presence, right? I guess this is why the guy became a movie star. Mm -hmm. It's like just in like however many scenes he has in this movie, he is like just this force. You know, I would right. not want to fuck with Telly Savalas. I was wondering if I've ever seen Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. I mean, I know they've gone up against all kind of supernatural <laughs> monsters, but this one, I was like, oh, Jesus, how's this going to play out? <laughs> can they overcome Telly Savalas? <laughs> they've beaten Frankenstein. They've beaten yeah. Dracula, but can they beat Telly Savalas? Right. Yeah, because I'm like, what's going to happen? He's just going to beat the fuck out of him. Or right? Something. Cause he's that seems a... to be his plan, Yeah. right? Like, yeah. I'll beat the fuck out of anybody yeah. until you find out who the killer is. Yeah. yeah. If, if he's not impressed, if, if my sheer presence doesn't intimidate people into doing the right thing, I'll <laughs> Just beat the shit out of right. everybody. Yeah, because he doesn't. He does he beat up the priest? Oh, we whips him. Yeah, he whips him yeah. a bunch. Yeah, but it's weird that his. I mean, when he comes on board, he basically gathers everybody together. Yes, and is like, you know, there's a killer on One board. One of you is the murderer, and you will not leave this room. You're all under arrest. Yes. You know, uh, and I think what was it? No, the, the the police inspector said he was prepared to shoot everybody on the train until he actually finds out like who the killer is. Right, right. Uh, Telly Savalas is like apparently the, the next step up from that, and um, what well, I and the the way that Lee and uh, and and Cushing react to him are like, what what is this nonsense? What yeah. is this you know rubbish <laughs> rubbish that's that's happening? There's obviously an explanation for this. He's like. Psh. Like yeah, he has them hit. Yeah, he does. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because they're just they're British science nerds to him at this point. He's like, uh, I'm in charge. Yeah, and he smokes that cigarette by basically putting his whole hand over his mouth. Yeah, and then he right. moves it in the different directions as he's smoking it. Like that's an actor. <laughs> <laughs> How many he, things can you do with a cigarette? I don't know. You know his uh, uh, you know history or any backstory or anything like that. He comes off like I'm like, is he drunk when he's playing this line? Is this part? Is he just like just a larger than life? I think he's larger than life guy. He is he ad libbing? That. I don't know, but man, he's like free willing. It feels like in this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, I'm just walking in here and I'm taking this fucking movie over. Yeah. I'm going to dominate every single person on this train. Yep. <laughs> and um, then you're going to give me final billing in the movie. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> 
at the he's like the the last credit. He is the, the last lone credit. But there is a me. full page of black that goes by before yeah. you get to his name, and then it hangs for probably what like seven or eight seconds. Yeah, before it feels he like Tully yeah. Savalas got everything he wanted out of this movie. Yeah, as, money was a Captain Kazan. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, coming on board. And um, the interesting thing is that even though his uh, investigation method is like unorthodox i suppose you would say he does come to the right conclusion Mm -hmm. of who the suspect is Mm -hmm. (laughs) yes i mean i suppose you beat enough people you're gonna find out right he beats the right guy yeah right (laughs) the first time yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) the uh the russian priest who basically then he makes a deduction that Mm -hmm. like he was protecting the uh the police inspector so there's something up with the police inspector right he's our guy well then at that point, I think it's at the same point, um, Christopher Lee sneaking his way into the back of the car and he goes up and dials down the lights again because he's the consummate scientist. So he's doing his own experiment right now. <laughs> so he yeah. heads to the back to to wind down, the turn off the lights. And that's when the demon eyes come back on the police officer. Yeah. And because he's I guess, revealed. Is that what we're supposed to think? Like he he looks normal because they do like like the thing. Yeah. They do a like how, well how can we tell who's who? And they're like we're gonna do a test, but their test is we're gonna look at their eyes with a magnifying glass. Oh right, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They but look they're at doing eyes. it with it, with the lights on. So is the idea that if you turn the lights off, like this guy's eyes are just glowing yes. red? Yes. Okay. That is where yeah. we end up because again, like you said, they magnify glasses everyone's eyes to check because that is what science has brought them to mm-hmm. the eyes. Well, now the alien is exposed and threatened, and so he retreats into the baggage car. And in, instead of following him in there, the uh, Russians just unload out everything they <laughs> yep. have. They do <laughs> on the door. At nothing. <laughs> At nothing. But they at least the, wait to see him. the The priest has gone back there too. Yes. Because the police officer has been shot and stabbed by oh, Tellus right. Savalas at this Savalas, point. Savalas, like, in his mm-hmm. back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, like, whipped a uh, yeah. uh, fucking, it's not a sword, but, I mean, it's basically a sword. It's like he a whipped dagger. a sword yeah. Yeah. into but, his back and mm-hmm. shot him a couple times. Again, I, I like that, like, you know, Savalas comes in. Well, I guess, you know, he says that he's a religious man or whatever. So, you know, he is kind of predisposed mm-hmm. to believe in the in evil. Right. But it's like, as soon as he sees it, it's like, I'm going to stab that fucking thing. Yeah. I'm going right. to shoot it. You know, it's like, there's oh, yeah. no, no question. No fucking around. Just action, you know? Uh, I can see what I can see. And that yeah. guy has red yeah. devil he's eyes. The dead, he's the devil. Yeah. Um, so but he's very injured. The uh, And this is pre-exorcist right the uh priest says to the 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 creature coming to me yeah you know mm-hmm. you're dying uh willingly uh, you know take me over and so the creature does take the the priest over now that not priest is uh is the monster yes and um i believe then he does go and get his goal which is the Polish count who knows about the the chemical makeup or whatever composition yeah, the of metal. the steel. Yeah, the steel. The he, the creature's going to use to build his spaceship to get off Earth. And at this point, Sean's like, "Does this movie end with like the creation of the space program?" <laughs> right, right. Oh my god, like, this is just one long build up to yeah. NASA. Yeah. Like, this is a NASA like propaganda it. movie. Yeah. NASA, cr- the aliens created our way to get into space. That would, yeah. And when you said that, I'm like, me. "Oh shit, that would be a good way." For this like, movie to go, <laughs> it would be a great way. Like <laughs> seventy years later, or whatever yeah. we get into, it's just like nineteen sixty nine, and it's like fucking the priest who's got a haircut and a, a shave and everything going yeah. up to space. Yeah, right. He finally gets the, the he made them build the ship yep. for him, so he, got and then he hijacks it, or he just takes the dude over the captain. Yeah, you that know? would be real. Yeah, you see red glowing eyes as they launch into space, and then credits. Well, this uh, this is also, I guess, when when the creature doesn't feel um, that threatened, then because he's basically killed all of his, you know, anybody who's. Oh yeah, there's that scene he where he goes everybody. through all the the. Um, this is the malignant scene. Yeah, <laughs> and this is what we're gonna call these scenes yeah. from now on. Mm-hmm. These are the malignant scenes where he just goes ape shit and kills everyone in a room. Mm-hmm. So yeah. all the soldiers who were shooting and Telly Savalas end up dead at this point. Yeah, so there's just corpses everywhere, yeah. yep. white-eyed corpses littering this uh, train car. Yep. And so then no foes left to attack him except for Christopher Lee, who's like, as long as I show shine a light in his face, he can't actually zap me. Right. Mm-hmm. And so there's a confrontation there that becomes like a dialogue scene, which is, I guess, the final ultimate 
um, it's the alien talking. Yes. Right. You know, and you find out that like he's a form of energy and yep. the, the ape was actually just a shell. He like he lived in protozoa and fish yep. and you know, all this stuff until he became an ape or I guess the missing link. Right. And then froze. And now he's like continuing to live through these shells right. of the. I'm like, and he's this like, movie's amazing. Like, <laughs> right. right? <laughs> For 1972, you yeah. know? And you're like, is this like, was this going on? Is this like a, I mean, was Doctor Who doing this kind of stuff? Or, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, know. we've talked about Nigel Neal's uh, fiction in, in, in right. previous episodes, but it's like, or H.P. Lovecraft. It's like, the, you know, and then you're like, where? This is a. How did what we are these get there? ideas right. Uh, right. of this movie called Horror Express? Right? <laughs> Never right. thought we'd be here. And then he's ending, he's like, you don't want to kill it, do you? You don't want to end it here. Yeah. He's like, all your that. entire, your planet's entire history is in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to kill it. You got to you know, you I mean, It's going to, it's an infection, basically. Mm -hmm. It's going to you know, override the entire planet. Right. Or you just let him go. I guess that's what he wants. You know, it's like, just let me go. Yeah. Like, you can't do that. No, nope, can't do that. So Lee. he goes into a trance, mm -hmm. and he wakes up every dead body. This is okay. So this is before Game the of Thrones. Night King. Before yeah. the Night yeah, King, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this movie inspired a lot of our pop culture, is what I'm learning. If they saw it, I don't know if it, you know, but again, it's like it's cool to see that somebody had that idea, yes. like, right? Actually, you know what? George R. R. Martin did see this. I'm, I I'm guarantee sure he he's saw seen this. this. <laughs> but you know, I mean, wherever mm -hmm. ideas come from, but it's just cool to see that, like. How long ago somebody else had the right. same right. idea, you know, and the, the climax of the movie is going to be the bad guy resurrecting all the dead guys to come and attack our heroes. Yeah. And they got to run the gamut. And Christopher Lee, of course, because he's an educated man, education in Britain means you have sort of fencing training. Right. And so he's able to <laughs> get a is, saber yes. and a sword skewer fight. all these fucking undead soldiers. Now, see if the if the bad guy had resurrected them with the knowledge of how to use a gun, mm. uh, it'd be a different movie. True, mm -hmm. true, 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 true. But he did. So, um, when there's a lot of running, I feel. Yeah, because mm -hmm. word has gotten out, or apparently because Kazan didn't radio back to headquarters, Moscow's like fucking kill everybody on the goddamn <laughs> right. train because they're Russians, and that's what Russians do when they right. have to. Right? Is it and a war? I think this means war. <laughs> yeah, they immediately assume it's some sort of war tactic. Right. It's a war against space, yeah. my friend. Yeah. We're getting the orders. We can do it. Uh, so, I mean, I guess you would. Okay, so I got nothing against <laughs> those but guys. But it's just a funny the... thing. It's like it just says switch the track, but everyone will die. Mm -hmm. It's like, a, oh, okay, maybe there's a war. So they turn the uh, the tracks. So the uh, train's gonna go right off a fucking cliff. Mm -hmm. Right. Meanwhile, uh, Peter Cushing uh, is trying to. He's gathered everyone into the last train of the car, and this is when uh, Christopher Lee shows up as well. And they together decide um, they know they obviously know that the track is gonna be switched, or or they they are just trying to disengage themselves so they are not connected to the train and Satan anymore. Yeah, yeah that's all they want. I think yeah. that's it, right? Because yes, yeah. it's because that classic Western move of just pull the pegs out of the connectors to the train cars, right. and we'll separate ourselves. So right. yeah, just so the train is still going. But I guess the question is, why did they do that if they don't know that the train is going to be like going off a cliff? I well, that's what I was saying. I think they just want to be disconnected so they're not. Is with it him because? Anymore. Yeah. Well, because he the alien uh, priest yeah. dude, he takes control of the the train. Maybe that's it. He makes his way to the front. Yeah, he does. He does. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's, he's driving, driving it. it. Yeah. He's driving it. And right. so they're like, okay, fine. <laughs> the only thing we got to do to keep everybody safe it's is just disconnect. Un disconnect. Yeah. Right. But I guess in their thinking then, it's like they don't know that it's going to die. They are right. just like, we have to save ourselves right. and yes. disconnect and the monster is going to keep on going and for all we know, get away. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that is their plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and they don't off. know that the Russians have planned for the thing to go over the cliff. Yeah, it just goes. There, you ever had train tracks? This is some Looney Tunes shit, too. Yeah. yeah. Train tracks that just dead end on a cliff. Yeah. Right. Like, well, yeah, we have plans to build this bridge at some I point. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they, everybody's seen enough just, Westerns by then to right. just assume. Oh, yeah. <clears> there's a bridge over. coming soon. It's got to go over. But right now, it's just this fucking cliff. It's nice a, model cliff. Nice model cliff. Mm -hmm. Nice model train goes nice. over the. It explodes pretty good. Yep. You see it on fire for a while. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then that last train car just 
slowly wheels its way up to the very edge of the cliff. It made me so nervous how they were all standing at the front looking out like, guys, don't tip your weight yeah, forward like say, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a little bit, and that's going over. Because yeah. everybody's poking their head out of the cargo door and all that stuff, and like, woo! Mm-hmm. You know, we avoided... Thank God uh, we made it, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, because it got uh, get pretty pretty close there. Mm-hmm. Um, Indeed. We didn't really talk about the... Um, well, I think like, like there was kind of this like sexual tension. Maybe was there? It's very British. Um, <laughs> nah, it didn't matter between the well because the uh, the spy yeah. like uh, just kind of integrates herself into the guys. She does, uh, yeah, because they, they're sharing the same room, and she's like, "I'm just gonna come in here because you, you got to hide me." Yeah, or whatever. she's trying to get away. And then Peter uh, Christopher Lee may have something going with the countess. Maybe, but that Maybe. also doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying that doesn't matter. It doesn't. Nah, let doesn't. me ask you this. Now <laughs> Colin pulls out his wild card. Okay. <laughs> Does Telly Savalas matter to the movie? Not like, really. Could you take him oh. and his forces out of his forces yeah. his, out of the movie? Oh yeah. Yeah, I, that's actually where the movie started to lose me a little bit. Yeah, if I'm being honest. it felt like a real big detour once we got to Telly yeah. Savalas. Yeah. It's just like oh, we stopped. Mm-hmm. We literally stopped so he, this character could get onto her movie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. What does he contribute? What does him or his, I mean, his being in the movie, um, I know that obviously he brings zombies for right. a yeah. body count is all he really contributes. Yes. Yeah. Right. A uh, final threat. But right. other than that, you know, ultimately nothing. But I mean, I still enjoy those scenes so yes. much, but yeah. it's like plot wise, it does feel like we injected this just to get an extra bit of run time. It slows the pace a little bit, yeah. It does, mm-hmm. yes. It does slow down. But again, like you said, I like those scenes. Mm-hmm. I like him. He's doing wild stuff, so. Right. Yeah. Not entirely bothered by it. But there we go. Well, there you go. Horror, Horror Express. Express. Yeah. Now we're pull- we've, we've pulled into the station. <laughs> uh, it's not on the edge of now, a cliff. Right. So, yeah. It's now time to unload our thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. we will tell you uh, whether or, uh, or maybe our, I'll just steal yours. Come. Oh. Uh-huh. Oh, shit. oh yeah. There we go. That's right. We got to keep the lights on. Well, we're gonna tell you what we thought <laughs> of horror. Suck your brain smooth. <laughs> I know so it does gross. look. It does look <laughs> do they poke it at one point? They rub it. They, yeah, 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 rub it because they, they literally have to feel and make sure there's no wrinkles. Right. That yeah. was. I can see there's no uh, wrinkles. The way it <laughs> no moved wrinkles. when they did that was yeah. real gross and like it looked, that. Yeah, like you just give it a nice smack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tree panning is what you call cutting somebody at the top of the no. off. Turns out, isn't Good that what know. they? Well, she said it in the like. What are they doing? Tree pan. No. Like, All okay, right. there you go. Okay. So you Good to know. Take the uh, top of the skull off. <laughs> Just like Hannibal Lecter. Yep. yep. Right? Always like Hannibal Lecter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we'll tell you if you should watch other Horror Express uh, right after we read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, right, thank you, Igor. Do you think he's ever been on any of these trains we've covered on Train Month? Oh, he's definitely been in a crate on a train. Yeah. Oh, like, that is, oh, that might pi- be how we got him. I was picturing him hanging from the bottom of the train oh, like yeah, a cartoon yeah, villain yeah. when they hitch a ride that. underneath <laughs> and they grab on. That's what I was picturing him He's doing. stowed away on a few yeah. things, I'll bet. Yeah. He is definitely uh, not of I thought Earth. you were going to say, <laughs> not yeah, not Earth, of this yeah. Earth. Yeah. yeah, it's like, this is just what he looks like right now. Yeah. yeah. But he really, that yeah. thing wants to be us. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Somebody turn the lights off. I can look at Colin's <laughs> yeah. eyes. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> we should let uh, the good folks at home know how they can participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or they can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or they can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, Horror Express Action Dude writes in. Uh, welcome back, welcome Action, back Dude. Action Dude. Well, he says you can't go wrong with Cushing and Lee. They were the Jay and Silent Bob of horror, or Jay and <laughs> Silent Bob, the Cushing and Lee of stoner anxious comedies in the 90s. Yes, that's the correct version. <laughs> that's how do you feel about that? Um, that's, 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 that's who we should have. How do you feel about that? Well, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I was like, what would be the because they're not like a comedy duo, no. although they are kind of funny in this movie. That's, mm-hmm. I guess, the thing. This movie actually does mm-hmm. have some 
humor. I like that um, this is funny for them. <laughs> yeah, this, like, is, this a, is as far as they went to being funny. Yeah, you're, I think that's right. You're right. They they had fun doing oh, yeah. this yeah. because it it kind of you know it has that kind of lightness of tone. Yes. Um, Andrew Paulson Kirk says I didn't find this movie as fun as Terror Train. It could be because I prefer slashers to monsters, or maybe I'm just under David Copperfield's spell. I think that's <laughs> it. If you prefer Terror Train to any other movie, it's because of David Copperfield. Yeah. Clearly. It's the only reason. Yeah. Well, Cooter- He had the same look in your eyes type thing <laughs> yeah. as this movie. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I also the feel whammy. like he was sucking he, the knowledge out of He would brain. have preferred to be on this train because all those people would have been a captive audience for him. They would That's have loved true. that. While you're all here in this laugh, yeah. <laughs> nothing up my sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> Or a Cooter Hollister Jr. <laughs> what? All right, love it. Oh, love so there's it, a it, there's it. an elder Cooter. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah. Cooter Sr. Well, say hello yeah. to the elder Cooter for me. Yes, please do. Cooter says it's such a fun, solid movie. It is. Yep. It is. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Uh, Teresa Ann says Shudder's Creep Show series heavily featured this movie in an episode in season two. Really? Okay, so you guys haven't seen this. I actually did see Interesting. that. Interesting. Justin Long is a guy who develops virtual reality stuff. And one of the things he develops is a headset. I think it's like a whole body thing. You got to lay in it that transports you into a movie. And it's Horror Express. I mean, like the whole episode That's cool. is like him interacting with Christopher Lee and all the characters and Peter Cushing. But they recast, I think it's the Countess, because he has like a relationship with the Countess, and then his real life girlfriend finds out that he's getting in this thing. And hmm. Shit, I gotta watch this episode. <laughs> See, I don't care okay. if it's good or bad, I gotta I, watch this episode. Everyone tells me not to watch the Creepshow yes. TV series, but every time it gets brought up in the show, I want to watch it, because it sounds interesting. Well, hey, you, uh, know? you may be the one they're making it for. Yeah, I definitely want to watch me. that episode, yeah. though. It's And it's going on, like, what, a fourth season now I think or so. That's, that's what I'm like. Oh, Was yeah. that season two or season three? I don't yeah. know, but yeah, I'll I mean, find it. basically, yeah, that's it's, fun. it's the one with Justin Long in it. So okay, there you go. that's um, fun. Adam Kaler says, when are people going to leave creatures frozen in the ice alone? I liked right. how the dog was able to sniff out the shenanigans like a triple meat and a Klingon. <laughs> and I find the setting of a train very oppressive when it comes to being hunted down by a monster. Freak show all stars. In this scenario, where is the best place to hide on a train? And do you take the dog with you? No, dog's gone. Yeah, the dog's going to give away your location. Dog's, gonna give away your location. Away. dog's going out the window. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I'll just let it loose and let it see if it's. Re- it's one of those things where you let it loose and then at the very end, when you're on the train station, steps, it comes back. It runs back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, but no, that man. thing doesn't stick with me. I mean, I guess like the conductor car, because like hopefully you can take it over and there's probably close a door, door or a window right. yeah that you can get out if you have to yeah yeah i, yeah, I like that a close yeah. space where you can but also maybe the bathroom yeah bathroom yeah because yeah. there was a, a couple of times where it was like wait how did he get from in front of them to all the way right. yeah, that was on a train he that can't was really the do one that. jump where i was just like "Ooh, i don't believe you yeah. when he got into the car with all the soldiers after they were yeah. blasting i'm just like come on you gotta you gotta go out between the train and the cars and go up Although he, then, although I think people would hear you, and yeah. he was perilous. doing that throughout the movie, so maybe he did that to get into the car with the soldiers. I'm I'll a, take that. I'm a little sad we never got a scene of like a showdown on top of the train cars yep. or something. <laughs> that would, you know? no, because then we would have had action figures on top of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, and, and that sounds like, awesome. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, yes, it does. We've <laughs> seen <laughs> your hunter yeah. from the future, and it, it worked well in that movie, so I'm on board. This for is very it. true. But I think that also, like, you're getting into Twilight Zone territory, right? If you show that monster outside the window Probably. on the outside of the train car on the yeah, top, creeping you're getting, around up there. Yeah, you're yeah, then, that one would have yeah. definitely looked like, yeah. Yeah, it's getting too Twilight Zone then. You got to step true. away from that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, last week, we watched a movie called Doom Asylum. Ket's yes. one says it's a great film and the girl band rocks. That's a that's you a, probably that's, won't that's like our comment. episode. Yeah, that's a troll comment. Uh, it turns out that uh, Tina and the Tots was the Tots. Name of, Tots. Uh, yeah, it yeah. was. I on my second viewing, I here's I what, noticed that. What? All right, oh, all right, I'm all right, sorry. All right. <laughs> update everyone. Justify yourself. Update everyone. Six minutes and thirty four seconds. And everyone who listened to our <laughs> Doom Asylum episode will know what that yeah. means. Six minutes thirty four. You seconds. watched the whole thing, yeah, huh? I fast forwarded through. No, I didn't watch the whole thing. I paid attention when the old movies came back in. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what I did. And then time those. Yeah. You, you so, order that Blu-ray yet, Sean? No. In your basket? No. That tattoo <laughs> will extras. stay away from my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Not getting it. Uh, Peter Gatt says, I've read in both IMDb and Letterboxd that uh, Doom Asylum is also considered a comedy. And while I admit <laughs> I laughed a lot, or uh, while I laughed a lot, a lot of it came off as too serious, and some studio exec thought, let's market this as a comedy to get 
another audience in the Saturday Night Freak Show. Thoughts? <laughs> Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> anything's probably. possible with yeah. that movie. I think. I think it was deliberately a comedy. I think. It's I think parts comedy. were, but there were parts that were unintentionally funny too. That's also true. You know. Yeah. And it's a little bit of both, but, but it yeah. has a tone where it's like it's not. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's serious. Or Until maybe it gore. is serious. Yeah. yeah. But maybe it's not serious. Yeah. <laughs> but do I want it to be serious? <laughs> I think I want it to be serious. Speaking but of then which, again, Ryan Handsome Jansen says that whole mom thing was fucking weird. A, weird. The weirdest. Yeah, it was weird. very weird. <laughs> That's incest. Yeah. Such uh, a weird movie. Joey Blythe says this is the weirdest Scooby-Doo episode <laughs> ever. Yes. Was this sponsored by Mopar? Yeah. <laughs> Why no is kidding. half the movie another movie? Has a new version of chess been invented that we don't know about? <laughs> I have so many questions. That's a lot of questions. I wish we had answers I for wish. you. Yeah. yeah. I have none. Uh, Travis Legler says, speaking of Arrow home video, they've been rocking it with a great special editions of RoboCop, American Werewolf in London, Reanimator, Brighter Reanimator, and of course, Tremors. Vestron yes. has been doing good too with Little Monsters, Beyond Reanimator, Shivers, Dream a Little Dream, and of course, Maximum Overdrive. We were of talking course. about mm-hmm. specialty labels, but the mm-hmm. difference is uh, Vestron is actually, I think, Lionsgate. Yes. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so they're a major. That's why their titles usually come out uh, cheaper mm-hmm. because they do, yes. they're in mass production and, gotcha. and the other guys yeah, have to make. Those are readily available in Walmart. Yeah. Uh, sea Huds. Chuds. Chuds. Says, I randomly watched this sometime last year on Tubi, I think, mm-hmm. with no previous knowledge of it. And my only positive takeaway was that Kristen Davis was really cute in her big 80s glasses. Yeah. She was. Yeah. She's looked pretty much the same. She was. Mm-hmm. Very cute. All right. The previous week, we watched a movie called Space Truckers. Uh, yeah. And Michael Whitaker says, certified genius George Went." <laughs> I forgot about that. Is either a band name or a t-shirt. Did oh. you ever confirm or deny that he... Man, I looked that he up. Is I a certified didn't see <laughs> where, okay. evidence. Okay. Then where did this come from? Right. Where did Sean pick this up this This came from some conversation I had with my dad a long time ago. <laughs> the George well, Went is I've, a certified I've genius. Down. George Went was on, I think, The Weakest Link one time. Remember that game yeah. show? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. And the, uh, and he killed it. And for some reason, I had a conversation with somebody. I think it was my dad. It's like he's he's actually a, a genius. <laughs> a and you carried that through genius. your adult life <sighs> to the oh, point. Yeah. Oh no, it's one of those things that you never that you're just you like this is, a, this is a fact until yeah. someone's just like. You're fucking stupid. And and, the, and that fact you uncovered might not be true live on air with us yeah. in that episode. I mean, we still don't know if it's true or not. I know, I mean, but... We haven't you, found anything. But the, w- but the way you said that on that episode with such confidence, yeah, like it was oh, yeah, a fact convinced. we all knew. Yeah, he's a like it was genius. A, convinced. Like, I still, this guy's I'll, you clue, know, George went to told, genius, you Nothing's know? told me otherwise, so he's still a certified genius. So I'm concerned. All right. There you go. Stay tuned. Yeah. I mean, we yeah, may... We we'll find out more, yeah. Uh, Scraw793 says, I just listened to the episode this morning. After watching the end of the film, I'm pretty, pretty being the operative word, uh, sure that Barbara Crampton figured out how to put aging on hold somehow. Yeah. I she's mean, got some yeah. secret. She's got something. I've I mean, seen her in person before. And yeah, yeah, she, she looks, looks, the, same looks the exact same. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Uh, Brett Williams says, okay, so Brett Williams. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is now, I think, the official uh, uh, Saturday Night Freak Show uh, go to science guy. Oh, congratulations. All right. I love having go to Mm -hmm. category people. That's right. Okay. MF Mad's the keeper on the wall. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brett Williams, welcome aboard. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay. So, Brett Williams says, because this is science correspondent. Science correspondent. Okay. Brett Williams says of space truckers, actually, exposure to a vacuum (laughs) is not immediately lethal. You need to exhale all the air from your lungs to avoid the high pressure of the air in your lungs from expanding and damaging them. Gases in your stomach, colon, and bladder will likely cause you to vomit and soil yourself Ew. when they expand. But dogs in the experiment survived Aww. up to 1.5 minutes in space and recovered, while chimps were able to recover after three to five minutes. However, movies that show ice crystallizing mm. on someone in a vacuum are wrong. The moisture actually evaporates, as one NASA technician who accidentally depressurized his suit found out, as his last memory before blacking out was his saliva boiling off his tongue. (gasps) But he got his sense of taste back eventually. Jesus. I have a new thing to worry about. Oh, that, yeah, that's a nightmare to wake up from. Well, honestly, I have, like, I have space probably, anxiety. It probably like, sounds like pop rocks yeah. on your tongue. That's what it sounds like when your saliva boils. Yeah. Oh, oh, dude, I have space anxiety. I think about all the time, like, <laughs> 
people that go to space and then come back to normal life that's wild to me yeah, yeah, like yeah. i can totally understand how you go i understand space madness you go up into space you see <laughs> our known universe <laughs> from space that's got to break your brain a little uh, bit yeah, right yeah. then you come back down you go back to your normal life you go to your local starbucks and the lady in front of you is yelling at the barista and you're like I've been to space. <laughs> I've been to yeah. fucking space. You Your look problems so small are right insignificant. Now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that just has to be the biggest shock you could experience as a human being, right? Yeah, it's gotta like, be weird. Oof. Yeah. But the upside Not is for me. The, Can't human do it. Mind, <laughs> the human mind can actually adapt to that. It's yeah. the other, I guess, a yeah. great thing about right. <laughs> how we work. And if not, we can make movies about how it doesn't adapt to yeah. that and goes yeah. crazy. So the previous week, I think, we watched Hard Ticket to Hawaii, and mm-hmm. I probably should have read this comment before but uh our science correspondent brett williams okay reports back on hard ticket to hawaii saying since okay since i already looked up the grizzly bazooka go back and listen to that episode i better do the research for the hard ticket to hawaii mr the mlrs multi-launch rocket system i suspect they saw the m202 flash flame assault shoulder prop used in commando and decided to make their own most of the parts are PVC plumbing and pipe and contactor or connectors with a good deal of black spray paint. But the bottom piece is the Entertech Waterhawk, which was a popular <laughs> wa- electronic water pistol that we played with as kids in the eighties, which was modeled after the Intertech Tech Nine submachine gun. Holy fuck! I had that gun. Ah, uh, that's amazing. <laughs> I, remember I remember that, that squirt gun. Man, I may actually have that in the basement somewhere. Uh, anyway, he says. Uh, this is totally something kids would would have built ourselves back then, and apparently they were using actual fireworks as rockets coming out of it, according to the Internet Movie Database. Nice. Very nice. And he says that's a great resource for identifying all the props from shoot 'em up movies. Nice. So there you go. The rocket launcher. Thank you for your segment. The science report. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Such knowledgeable fans. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thank you all of you for yes. writing in. We mm-hmm. greatly appreciate it. I mean, our minds are expanded, and uh, you know, we learn new yeah. things. Uh, I feel every like week. I looked into someone's eyes and just took all their knowledge right into right? my brain just now. Thank you. So, wow, what yeah. a segue that is. <laughs> so, Michaela, yeah. what did you think about tonight's movie, Horror Express? You know, Colin, I'm not going to lie. I have my doubts that we're going back to trains this quickly. I did too. I was like. He's got something up his sleeve. There's got to be something with this. It's not just trains. Um, the title, I was like, mm, it's, a little, it's a little generic. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about that. Um, I definitely expected more of like a hammer type movie for sure. But I was very pleasantly surprised. It is the thing on a train, but I'm totally okay with it because of the way it's handled and the way they like the, the British dry flavor to it. Thing, the thing on a train really helps it, I think. Um, <laughs> I do feel like it did slow down a little bit when they literally stopped the train so Telly Savalas could get on. Yeah. But I enjoyed his presence and what he was doing and like the over the topness of all those scenes. I, yeah, it's crazy to me that, like, yeah, Heroes basically took that same concept and made an entire villain based around it. Um, because I can't say that's something I see in a lot of stuff is like, I look at your brain and I absorb all your knowledge. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it was a good time. I really enjoyed it. I at first I thought we were just gonna get monster movie on a train, which I was like totally down for that. I never get sick of seeing this, you know, um, especially with like the uptight, dry British people mm, and their fancy yes. curtains. I like the juxtaposition <laughs> of those two things, you know. Um, I think I would definitely recommend it. It was a good time, and I really liked it. I wish it had a better title, and I I love Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee together, and he looks so nice with the mustache and the nice coat it's a good look for him in this movie and uh i think they both come off well and i i don't know like it it, i really like this type of movie i think maybe i'm getting into train train movies now (laughs) maybe i'm a train you get exposed to it enough (laughs) it's normal now yeah well because i was seeing the trailers for death on the nile and i was like I'm, I'm a little interested like mm-hmm. i think right, a boat. yeah and like it looked expensive and it looked cool oh, and yeah. there was just other issues objections i had to watching that movie but i i was just like Meh. so I, I feel like this scratched the itch of there you go something i was feeling for <laughs> death on the nile you know yeah, uh-huh. and i think i probably will like this better than death on the nile anyways just because of the type of movie it is you know yeah i definitely recommend it. it's a good time and uh, embrace the train movie love you know you might have a good time so, Sean, what do you think? Um, it's definitely uh, it's definitely got the wrong title, mm-hmm. but uh, everything about everything else about this movie is right. 
Um, what a fun little, uh, what a fun dry British treat this movie is. <laughs> yeah. um, definitely not what I expected, and I love that about uh, any movie that I watch. It's um, it goes places I never thought it was going to go, which is great. Again, like you said, Monster on a Train, that's fun. Uh, we've got um, I almost call him Christopher Reeve, Christopher Lee, uh, and Peter Cushing, who again just feel like they're having a good time making this movie. I like seeing them have fun, and I think they had a lot of fun making this. Um, I think everyone's bringing it in this. The idea is just, the idea is fun. The, it's a good time. I, I was surprised at how much fun I had with this movie. I, you know, I laughed a lot. It is very dry and British, but that's the best thing about it. I was very excited to watch them science their way through this movie. Um, and it is, um, uh, the thing on a train, but that's great. Uh, this movie's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, don't let that, uh, uh, that title dissuade you from anything or think of that it is generic or what have you um you're getting uh something really fun and good with this movie so yeah i definitely recommend it i so want to go watch the creep show episode right now yeah um <laughs> yeah i'm all in for that so yeah this was a good time you should definitely watch it colin yeah i mean i think that is the biggest deficit to the movie is the title you know because i think for years and i think you know i also you know, when you see a movie that's on a 20 pack of movies, yeah. you're like, well, you dismiss it a little bit. Yeah, it right. can't be all that good. And so that's why I kind of like the fact that Arrow has uh, resurrected it. You know, I think Severin may have put out a version of it prior to that. So, you know, it is kind of it feels like coming back and finally getting like and now, you know, creep show yeah. uh, bought it apparently or whatever. And I, like to use all the footage <laughs> from it. That's great. Um. But I like, I think, you know, we've talked about this before on, you know, uh, Prince of Darkness or, or Quatermass movie. I like, I like these movies that are kind of like, uh, we're going to take a supernatural phenomena and then explain it by scientific means. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think, you know, even the guy's speech, the alien at the end when he's in the possessed uh, monk is basically like, you know, I came here with others, uh, but right. I was left here by accident. So he basically is like e. the Martian. Uh, sciencing the shit out of it to try and figure out how we can get back <laughs> right. off the planet. He's the good guy, is what you're saying. You're <laughs> yeah. shifting the perspective. Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it has the... It, I guess it doesn't feel like a Hammer movie. Like, this maybe should have been the stuff that Hammer moved into instead right. of, like, To the Devil a Daughter, or, even though I like it, uh, the uh, Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires right. are on, you know, yeah, the same time. Yeah, they should time. have pivoted to stuff like this. It's yeah, fun. yeah. But uh, it, but I, I like having I like those guys. I like having them all together. Adding Telly Savalas is like a volatile, uh, you know, injection into the middle of uh, both yes. the movie and you know the Christopher Lee Peter Cushing uh, partnership. Um, yeah, I thought it was like accomplished. It, you know, it um, the model work is solid. It seemed like it had the budget to actually pull off like what it, you know the the script. The script I thought was good. It had. You know, these uh, uh, far, it kept evolving. Yes. Um, but I do think, you know, as a criticism, it's like, well, we see a lot of white eyes and bleeding, you know, I, uh, you know, and uh, a lot of uh, autopsies. Yeah. Uh, a lot of bodies stack up in those. So it does kind of feel like, okay, we're, we're, I saw this already. Yeah. I never got tired of it, though. Okay. Like, we, well, yeah, it we worked for me. Pace. It worked for me. We were on a pace. Telly Smallis is the only thing that slowed this down. Everything else I thought was like, I agree. we're going, we're good. I yeah. liked it. I, mean, I was with it. I mean, I would definitely, I guess it was one of those things that, you know, when I revisited it and saw it, you know, cleaned up and I'm like, man, this really is like a good movie. And then I was like, well, I got to at some point bring this to the Saturday night <laughs> show. So I've had this one like on the, in the ah, hopper for a while. Okay. And I'm like, eventually I'm going to get to it, you know? And then we started doing train movies. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it seems like the next logical step is, you know, but this is the last one I got. But uh, so there you go. Uh, you should definitely check out Horror Express. Yes. Or Panic on the Trans-Siberian Express if you're in Spain. But if, apparently it, <laughs> if you're nasty. that's where it didn't do well. Like, oh, it yeah. Did, it it's did well everywhere else in the world, but not in the director's home country. He was really bummed. Interesting. <laughs> at the time. But uh, OK. All right. Well, that's uh, that's it. Right. That's Freak Show Approved. And that means that you have to watch it. Those yes. are the rules. Those are the rules. Um, so it. Next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Sean, what are we watching next week? Uh, next week, uh, we will be taking a trip to the big city. We will be watching New York Ninja. 
Oh, All shit. All right. I don't know anything about this, but that sounds Keep like that a way. canon movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. Oh, okay. Right. It's got a it's got a it's story. Got a it's got a history. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Have you seen it? I've watched everything else but the movie. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, all right. well, that's next week. <laughs> all the behind the scenes stuff and all that. I watched it all. all the bonus the features. Movie. I'm saving yeah, the movie for us. That's right. And right now is like the time to strike on that one. I think so. Yes. Uh, enthusiasm yes. for it. So, uh, New York Ninja next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>